In this video, I want to share with you one thing that's massively improved my photography over the last few years. And I want to show you how it's enabled me to create some really great shots like this one I took recently in the Lake District. Morning everybody, it's fantastic to see you all again. So I'm in the Lake District this week, actually recording next week's video, but I wanted to just introduce this week's video because I think it's the most important topic about getting better in photography and it's the thing that made the biggest difference to me. And I've just done it, I've been here for two hours trying to find a really, really fantastic photo and I think I got one. But more about that next week. This week I'm talking all about just staying in one location and how you can find better compositions by doing that. So I'm actually really, really excited about this. It's been a video that I've been wanting to make for quite a while and other things have happened and I've been going on trips and I made videos and vlog style um, videos on, on those trips. But I, I really wanna share this with you because it's something that comes up on workshops all the time. And um, you know when we go on workshops and people see that I spend more time in a location and how I use that time in that location to get really good compositions, then I think that helps their photography and it's significantly helped my photography. So that, that one thing is, is, is all about just trying to understand the location you're in a lot more. And to do that, you have to spend more time in that location. But by spending more time there, what happens is you, you sort of get in tune with the landscape. You start to uncover things that you didn't see when you first arrived there. Maybe the light changes a little bit and that alters how you perceive a certain thing within the landscape. And it's, it's one of those things that's really different to, difficult to explain until you've done it, until you've just sort of sat down for a couple of hours and just, just taken in the landscape and just watched things go by and the clouds move in. And you start to see things that perhaps you hadn't started seeing before. And this is slightly different to just trying to find a composition because what, what this does is it allows you to uncover other things to take photos of, which then you can then go and explore and then try and find a composition of that, of that thing. The best way to explain this is if I show you some photos and show you the progression of me taking photos in, in particular situations. So I'm gonna go and show you three or four photos, the final photos, but I'm also gonna show you how I got there and talk a little bit more about the, the, the environment, how that changed, how my perception of the landscape changed when I was there, and why I then, that enabled me to get something that was actually really quite special. And I do find that the longer I spend somewhere, the better the photograph I get out of that location. And it's not just about the change in light, although that does come into it, it it's just about just being in tune with that location. And that's why going back to locations helps a lot as well. So. Let's have a look at this first one. So I was looking at some photos in Iceland because I'm going there again next week on a, on a workshop. And I'm, I'm looking at this location, Vestron, which I went with Mass Peter Everson last year and I did a series of vlogs about it then. And we spent a long time there. I can't remember exactly how long, it's probably between four and six hours at this location. It was really interesting because we saw loads of photographers come and go whilst we were there. Um, and not, not so many stayed as long as we did. And I think people tend to, in Iceland, drive up in their bus, get out of the car, take a few shots and then go. And then don't quite understand why they don't get the shots that maybe other photographers get that spend longer there. Um, and what I found is that when I first got there, it was actually an amazing location. It looked fantastic, but it was quite difficult to find a composition that worked, that showed it off and that was simple because there was a lot of things going on. So this first shot was the first shot I took and you can see I was interested in this grass in the foreground and I really liked the mountains in the background, but the mountains in the background sort of span the whole background. So I was sort of really struggling to understand where I'm gonna cut those off. So I, I took this, I knew that the clouds were gonna change and ideally we'd get some better light later so I'd have a little bit of time. And then I progressed onto the one here, which was trying to use some of the sand in the foreground to sort of 
as leading lines leading up to the background mountains, but the problem was that people had just walked through it. So we had these really horrible footprints in, in the sand and that just didn't look good. So I sort of dismissed that a little bit, but then as I was going down to the sea and, and, and to, to take some shots of the waves coming in, and I noticed that as the sand was drying, it was creating um, a sort of a light and dark shades on the sand, which was creating this really amazing patterns. And, and in this particular location here, I, I found a, a place that there wasn't a lot of footprints. And I'd been sat here for probably about half an hour just thinking what I'm gonna shoot, what, you know, what, what I'm gonna look at. And I hadn't even seen this, this um, sand drying out and, and light and dark on, on the sand. But then I looked at it and I thought, actually, that makes a really good photo. So I took this photo and I thought, that's good. But again, that the clouds weren't right, it wasn't the right time of day. But I knew that that would make a good foreground. I then thought about taking the whole mountains. And then I couldn't find a good foreground to do that. And then the sky again wasn't quite right. But I thought, well, the, the whole mountains look really good. They're just these amazing peaks. So I'd, I'd got a few things that looked good. I had the amazing peaks that looked good. The sky wasn't great. And I'd found one bit of foreground that worked really well. And then as the clouds started to um, improve and then the light came out and we got closer to sunset, we were actually gonna almost go. I found this really great location. And I took this shot first and this shot was good, the mountains were fantastic, the cloud was fantastic. And then I remembered the shot I'd taken earlier, probably about three hours ago, where, where the drying out sand worked. So I moved just a little bit closer to get rid of this grassy feel. And then I got this here. So, so and this, this is the, sh the shot that was by far my best shot from, from Vesteron. And I just really like the way the, 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 the sand's drying out here. I really like the fact there's sort of a leading line all the way up here where this road is. Um, the light on these mountains is amazing. I actually took about 20 shots. This was the, this was the best one. And I was really pleased with it. And, and, and what's quite interesting is this is the, the best selling print that I've, I've ever produced. And then I also took another good, good shot as well, which I combined some of the other things that I'd, I'd worked on earlier, which was this one. Yeah, so this, this is, is a wider view. I, I'm in two minds. I've actually, when I printed this again, <laughs> I'm not sure whether I like this one or the previous one most. I think this is more dramatic and it has the whole mountain range on. Um, and I found this really nice bit of grass at the front here because I didn't really like the untidy grass, but this just works really well as like a round bit of grass that just sort of led your eye in. But again, it came about because I'd been in this location for a long time. I'd understood how I can use the grasses in the foreground, how I could use the sand and the way the sand's drying out in the midground, and how I wanted to position the mountains in the background. So I ended up getting these two shots that you know really I was really you know proud of. I, I really felt that they, they had something special to them. I think if I'd have just gone there for an hour, taken a few shots, I'd have got some of those earlier ones, they'd have been okay, I'd have been reasonably pleased with them, but I don't think they'd have been really, really special. So I'm now gonna go on to a shot, a couple of shots actually, that I took when I was in Scotland recently. It was actually on the way back from Torridon. So I stopped in Glencoe and I actually started to do a vlog um, in, in Glencoe, but it, it just didn't turn into, into much, I, I, I actually decided that I wanted to concentrate on my photography rather than vlogging and photography, which sometimes can be very difficult to do both together. So I did a little bit of a vlog, which you, you, you can see here in, in this lo location, which was just slightly up the hill um, by the side of the main road that runs through Glencoe. And I wanted to shoot these mountains here with this um, famous little hut at the bottom. And I wanted to get there prior to sunrise because I, I, I knew that the hut, there was somebody in the hut and the lights might be on and I wanted to, to sort of get that. So I had sort of a pre-visualization of what I was gonna get, but I, I thought that the weather was gonna change as well and, and come through. So I got there and I started taking the shot that I pre-visualized, which was this shot here of, of the hut and the lights. This was pre-sunrise and 
I just like the way the stream just came through it. And I was really reasonably pleased with this. Um, this was taken within about half an hour of getting there. But then I realized that things were changing. I started to spot down the valley that the, the, the snow was coming through. I was quite excited for snow on, on the peaks. And then it started snowing a, qu quite hard. And I thought, actually, what makes a really good shot is, is closer up on the hut. So getting a little bit closer in and not worrying about the mountain going off the top. And I would have never done that if I hadn't stayed there for a little bit longer. I tried a different lens. And then I thought, well, that's good. Maybe I should wait for the light a little bit. So I waited for the light to change. And, the, and, and because there was a lot of wind and the, you know, the weather was changing all the time, it was really coming through. It was bloody cold, actually. But you, you could see that the clouds were just really amazing in this shot. And I then got something really special. And this was probably around about an hour and a half to two hours after arriving there. And I'd walked probably within 100 meters of, of, of where I first stopped. So I, was, I hadn't walked around a lot. I just, I just sort of taken in the environment. I'd looked out, out and I'd seen what was going on with the weather. And then this happened. And because the, the sun came through here, then I managed to get something that was quite special because I'd already got a composition with this hut and then the sun just came, came through. And I think it produced something that tells a really good story as well because you can see the snow coming down. You can see this just real winter sunlight coming through and it lasted, I don't know, maybe two minutes. If I hadn't have been there, if I hadn't have been there for a long time, I wouldn't have got that shot. And then the sun disappeared and it was just, you know, a fairly poor day for the rest of the day, actually. But, you know, by persevering, by staying in one location, by sort of witnessing the environment around me, it allowed me to get this shot. Now, the next one is slightly different on how I took this because this was one that I went back to a location. And this was the actual the fourth time that I went back to this location. When I went up to Sky at the end of last year to run a workshop, I passed through Glencoe and seen this, this river meandering through the valley here. And I went to scout it, but couldn't really find a composition. So when I went up to Glencoe and to Torridon this time, I scouted it out, I found the composition. And um, then when I went back, on the way back, I spent about an hour and a half there, just waiting around for the right conditions. And yeah, I got, I got this shot. So um, it's, it's one of my favorite shots that I've taken this year. Um, if you've probably seen it, if you, you do follow me on social media apart from YouTube because I, I, I've sh shared it on Twitter and Instagram, I'll put my Instagram and Twitter links down here so and, and in the description so you can follow me because I do post lots of stories there as well so it's a good way of keeping up to date with me in the week, you know, in between the, vi the videos. And it just worked really well. It worked really well because I'd, I'd spent a lot of time in this location. I understood it. It seems like quite a simple composition, but you know, I'd spent quite a lot of time exploring different angles of how I could get this river, trying to get to a right, the right height so that I could get just about get all the river in. And yeah, I mean, I, I just, I just love the sky here. The sky is just amazing. You know, I really like the sweep of this bend here. I've called it Big Bend. Um, and it, I, I just I just love it. I think it just sums up Scotland um, really, really well. And then the final image is without doubt the favorite image that I've taken this year. Now this was also taken on a workshop um, and it was actually one of the last images we took on, on the workshop. And we got into the trees and we were taking some sort of more intimate tree images. And then I, I said to the guys, I think we should be higher up. I think we'll get something quite interesting because there's, there's a bit of an inversion and the, the, I think the mist is staying quite low. We might get some sunlight. So we went up and we went quite high. It was a bit of a hike. Um, we got to the top and it was, it was pretty amazing. Now, when we first got there though, it, although it looked good, it was quite difficult to find a composition. So this was the first image that I took. I was really interested in this mountain in the background. It had a little bit of light on it. Now I'd gone up there to scout it and then told um, the rest of the guys on, on the workshop, you know, to come up and um, then, then they followed me. Now I wasn't 100% sure. I was saying, yeah, I think you should come up, but I'm not 100% sure whether we're gonna get something amazing. And we were trying to find compositions. So the next thing we did was, was look at this one here. I quite like this transition of the snow into into the um, 
the, the areas of the fells that didn't have any snow on them. But I couldn't quite get the mist to work in the bottom. But then I could see the mist was just changing all the time. The mist was coming through and as the mist came through, the, the composition and the landscape was changing. So I took a close up of, of some trees. And then as I was taking this close up of this, these trees, we could see on, on the side of the mountain that the, this colored area, the, the, the area that didn't have any snow, had this amazing light on it. And the composition just came together. It wasn't difficult. I had a long lens. This was taken on my Fuji with a 50 to 140 lens. And I think it's about 120 millimeters, if, if memory, I'll put up the details here, 120 millimeters. And we were there for about two hours, something like that. And yeah, I mean, it just, it's such a lovely image and it just prints so well. The pastel colors are just amazing. The clouds up here are great. You know, the fact that we've got this, this really nice sunlight on this area here of the fell that hasn't got any snow on it, yet there's snow all around it. It just looks really, really amazing. And it, it sums up that morning, really. It was a very peaceful morning. You could hear um, just all the noises in the valley. Do you know when it's just so still that you just you can just hear a pin drop a long way away? <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely beautiful and really a privilege to be there. So yeah, this, this was a really fantastic shot and just proves again that staying in that one location and just trying to make something of that one location made all the difference. If we'd have just kept going from one location to the next, we wouldn't have got anything. We went up here and we stayed there for two hours. So that's it, that's, that's the thing that I think will make the biggest difference to anybody's photography. If they don't do that, you know, don't just keep moving from one location to the next and thinking, oh, I've got that now, I'm gonna get something else. Just stay and wait and you might see something a little bit different. The light might change. And I'm absolutely sure it will mean that you get a better image in the long run. So I hope that's helped. Um, I'm gonna put this image as a portfolio image actually on my website. I love it so much. So, so go and take a look at it. And thanks to everyone else that's bought um, prints from me recently. I really do appreciate it. It massively helps me be able to run this channel. And as much as anything else, I just love the fact that you know people have invested in my art and have got you know my my photos on the wall. I know everyone watching this are probably photographers, and you know you want to put your own photos on there. So I really do appreciate it when people go and and purchase my photos. It's it's something that's very special to to, to me. And until next Sunday. <laughs> <sighs> Right, I'm just sorting out my um, coffee and um, filters. Oh, 100. 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> I got to 100,000 subscribers last night. I can't believe it. <laughs> Thomas sent me a video, my son, of, of it going to 100,000 subscribers. He was so excited about getting there. And so am I, I just can't believe it. Thanks ever so much, can't believe I got to 100,000 subscribers. So everybody that pressed that button, I really, really do appreciate it. I can't believe I'm doing something that I can make a living out of and I'm massively passionate about. And it really means a lot that I can share something that helps people and you know, all the comments that I get are so nice. So thanks ever so much. It means I can get into amazing envir environments like this and, and, and take you along with me. I've got some amazing things planned for this year. It's gonna be so, so good. Yeah, I, today I've actually followed the instructions in this video and I've been out for five hours in this exact spot. I've gone up and down the shoreline. I've been about 50 meters and taken so many different um, compositions and just tweaked it a little bit. And, and, I, and I think I've finally got something that's just right with the light, the composition and the timing um, and the subject of this amazing ice that you can see behind me. Anyway, that's about it, and until next Sunday, bye. Ugh.